Welcome back to the playlist on carbohydrates. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so the topic of these few videos that we're doing is the stereochemistry of carbohydrates. Okay, so in the last video, and if you didn't see this, it's very important that you watch this, um, we talked about two of them, epimers and anomers. Okay, to do a brief recap, um, I'll do more detail in the previous video, but epimers are two carbohydrates um, that have exactly the same connectivity, they're stereoisomers, but they differ at the stereochemistry of one position and only one position. And it could be any one of these positions. An anomer is a special case of epimers where they still only differ at one position, but that one position has to be the anomeric carbon. We talked about that. And the anomeric carbon generally is the carbon that is right next to this oxygen. Okay. In the way that I draw it, I always draw it so the anomeric carbon is clockwise from that. Okay. In this video, we're going to do some more, two more examples. Um, we're going to talk about diastereomers and enantiomers. Okay. These are um, topics that you did in organic, and like I mentioned in the last video, typically, well, in everything that I've ever seen, they're in organic. Well, they, you know, they asked you. Oh, they give you two structures. Determine the relationship between these two structures. Are they diastereomeric, enantiomeric, constitutional isomers, all that crap, basically, right? So um, they generally will never do that in biochem, but they do want you to be able to communicate about it. You know, so just being able to recognize it. It's not really important to be able to determine it. You know, I mean, I mean, if you if you ever wanted to determine it, you can even look it up online because these compounds, there's only so many of these that you have to ever worry about. So they're already tabulated online. So what we're going to do is first look at diastereomers, and let's go over a, a brief um, a re recap of what a diastereomer is from organic. Diastereomers are two stereoisomers that differ in the stereochemistry at multiple positions, at least one position, but not all of them, okay? The requirement for being a diastereomer is that it can't be the opposite at every single position. It can only be some of them, okay? Cannot be all of them. So I will just tell you this, but you can prove it to yourself. These carbohydrates shown here have five stereocenters. They have five. And let me go ahead and highlight them. So the stereocenters are this one, that's one. Let me get the right color. So you can see it. that's one, that's another one, that's one, that's one, and this is one, okay? And the other one has the exact same ones too. So they each have five stereocenters. How many are constant, meaning they, they're not, they don't change between the two of these? Well, there's two that don't appear to change. If you look at, and this one on the left, this is actually glucose, that's glucose, this one on the right is idose. You're never going to really run into that. Um, it's not really found in humans. Um, I suppose you could eat this, and there are ways to get rid of it, but it's not one that you're ever going to typically run across. I'm just using it as an example. But if you look at this position right here, I'll label it in red, does that stereochemistry change on that carbon? Well, the only thing you have to say is, well, it goes up on both of them, so no, it doesn't change. That one's the same on idose and glucose. Now look at the anomeric carbon, this one. Does that one change between glucose and idose? The answer is, again, no. They're both going up, so they, they're, they're the same. But notice, and I'll go ahead and label these again by number. Here's one, two, three, four, and five, and then one, two, three, four, and five. If I look at positions two, three, and four, notice they do change. Look at two on glucose versus idose. Two on glucose is down, two on idose is up. Three on glucose is up, three on idose is down. Four on glucose is down, four on idose is up. So notice that positions one and five are constant between the two of them. So not all of them are different. Not all of them are opposite, but some of them are opposite. Three out of the five are opposite. That classifies these two, glucose and idose, as diastereomers. Okay? 
In fact, one thing when we talked about in the last video, I'll go ahead and show it again. Remember we said that glucose and galactose differ in stereochemistry in only one position. It's position four. In glucose, four is down. In galactose, four is up. The same thing is true of glucose and mannose. Look at position two. Two in glucose is down. Two in mannose is up. But look at galactose and mannose. Remember what we said. Notice they differ at 4 and 2 between galactose and mannose. Mannose at 2 is up. Galactose at 2 is down. 4 in mannose is down. 4 in galactose is up. So actually, if you were talking about galactose and mannose, these ones are actually diastereomers of each other. And that's because they don't just differ at 1. That would be epimers. They differ at more than one, two, but not all of them, which makes them diastereomers. Okay, so that's going to be really, really important for you. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. All right, let's move on to enantiomers. All right, enantiomers are sort of the most extreme at flipping the stereochemistry. All right, so let me let me show you this. All right. So let's go ahead and label this. This is position one, two, three, four, five. And then here's one, two, three, four, five. And you may be able to see where I'm going, all right? I'll just go ahead and tell you this, and it's not really apparent by looking at this why I know this, but you just have to take my word on it. This is glucose, but it's actually given the this letter before it D. And D just means this is um, one enantiomer of glucose. In fact, D-glucose is the one that you have. Um, you heard of blood sugar. The D-isomer is the one that runs through your veins, blood, right? D-glucose, that's what fuels your brain, your muscles. We don't use L-glucose, but this one over here is L-glucose, okay? L-glucose is not observed, okay? Let's make, let's do this. I want to do kind of a little activity here, okay? Let's on the right, left side, let's look at D-glucose. Let's look at L on this side, and here's what I want to do. Let's do this. Four, all right. Let's do this. Let's say this is position one, two, three, four, and five. And I just want to determine for each of these if the hydroxyl goes up or down. Let's do the D-isomer first. What about position one, up or down? Well, one is clearly up. Two is clearly down. What about three? Three is up. Four is down. Five, when you're looking at five, you're looking at this hydroxymethyl group right there, and that's clearly up, All right? Let's look at L-glucose. What's position one? Well, that's clearly down. Position two is clearly up. Three is down, four is up, and five, again, this hydroxymethyl group is clearly down. So you have up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down. Every one of those positions, one, two, three, four, and five, is the opposite between these two structures. If every one of the stereogenic centers, every one of those chiral carbons, if every one of them is flipped, then these two are enantiomers of each other. Now, I will go ahead and tell you this, that for, and I'm just going to use this as an, as an example, we have, let's see, um, for these, um, and the, glucose is an example of what we call a hexopyranose. You don't need to worry about what that is right now. Um, but suffice it to say, for hexopyranoses, the hexo part means it has six carbons. The pyranose part means it's a six-membered ring. So for these that are six carbons and have a six-membered ring, it turns out that there are eight D isomers. There's eight different ones. And you may have heard of some of them. Glucose, mannose, galactose. Um, there's others, idose. Um, you, you, can go, you can look at a chart of these, and you'll find there's eight D-isomers. 
But remember, each one of those has an enantiomer. So there's also eight L isomers. What's nice about this? Well, biology is rather consistent. These L carbohydrates, for at least for this kind, no, no, no organism has any use for them. So they're not observed. So the only ones that you really have to worry about are the D isomers. Now, that's a little bit different from amino acids. When we looked at amino acids, at least some bacteria have exceptions, but in general for mammals, birds, us, and anything really like that, we just use L amino acids. Well, for these carbohydrates, it's D. And in general, it's only D. I'm not really currently aware of anyone that uses L carbohydrates, at least for these kind. Okay. Um, there is an exception, L-lactate, but we're not going to worry about that right now. In general, we use the D-amino acids. So in terms of half of them, half of the enantiomers you don't even need to worry about. So you just have basically eight of them, and we only use the D ones. Okay. And so that is, these are enantiomeric to each other because they differ at the stereochemistry of every single one of the stereocenters. Every one of them. All five of them. And if you ever want to figure out what the enantiomer is, even though it's not observed, you just take one of the D isomers, and you can even make a chart like this. Just take each one of those carbons in the ring and flip the position of the OH group. Sometimes, once in a while, it's not an OH group. It could be a nitrogen, like an amine or something. But you'll just flip the amine. Okay, You'll flip the carbon. Just whatever is on it, flip it to the other side. And if you do that for all of them, you'll get the enantiomer. Okay. The nice thing is, though, that enantiomer is really never observed. Okay. So hopefully this gave you a little bit of intuition on carbohydrate um, stereochemistry with diastereomers and enantiomers. Okay. Make sure if you didn't catch the video on epimers and anomers, you go back and watch that because these are four very important stereochemical relationships that we have. Okay. So thanks for watching this video. Make sure to like it and subscribe to the, my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.